Lecture 1, Introduction to Breathing. Why do we breathe? We breathe so that we can take in oxygen into the body, breathe out carbon dioxide, and maintain the correct level of acidity for the body. Are there any other reasons why we breathe? There are reasons for breathing that are important for our quality of life. For example, we can talk, we can sing, we can smell nice things like durian or wine, and we can blow balloons. What happens to the gases in the lungs? Oxygen from the air sacs travels into the blood, while carbon dioxide flows from the blood into the air sacs. Both of them travel according to their concentration gradient. How does air get into lungs? There is a breathing control center in the brain. This uh, fires regularly and sends signals down the spinal cord to the nerves and finally to the muscles. We have two groups of breathing muscles. The breathing in muscles are used all the time when we breathe while the breathing out muscles are used primarily when we breathe hard, when we talk or sing, or when we have to cough. What prevents airflow in and out of the body? At the level of the upper airway, air needs to go through the nose or mouth and through the throat. When one is very fat, there is extra tissue in the tongue, in the throat, and this may increase the resistance. There may be extra growths in the nose, mouth, and throat. For example, nasal polyps, vocal cord polyps, or tumors in the throat. Some diseases, such as Parkinson's disease or motor neuron disease, affect the normal movement of the tongue, the swallowing muscles, and the vocal cords. If we drink too much alcohol or overdose on sleeping pills, the upper airway passage may become very floppy and collapse. After air passes the vocal cords, it has to pass through the windpipe and smaller airways before reaching the lung air sacs. In patients with asthma or chronic obstructive lung disease, the smaller airways may be narrowed or collapsed. The windpipe and the small airways may also be blocked by mucus or by inhaled food particles. The lung tissue may be abnormally stiff in the following circumstances. In people with previous tuberculosis, previous serious lung infection, or in people who have worked for many years inhaling coal dust, silica dust, or asbestos. Fluid and air may be present in the chest cavity outside the lungs. Fluid in the chest cavity outside the lungs is called pleural effusion and can occur in many disease states. Air in the chest cavity outside the lung is called pneumothorax. Both of these conditions may be seriously life-threatening. The normal movement of the ribs in breathing may be decreased in some people with certain bone and joint disorders, in people who have long-standing muscle weakness that leads to decreased breathing movements. Severe swelling of the abdomen may also impede normal breathing. The abdomen may be swollen in obesity, in diseases where there is fluid collecting in the abdomen, in pregnancy, in severe constipation, or in patients with various intestinal diseases that lead to obstruction or perforation.